What is going on guys, Jack here and welcome back to another episode of the Portsmouth Career Mode series. This is episode number 103 guys and in today's episode we are going to be going back into the transfer window. We are going to be looking to sign a fair few players in the transfer window and looking to sell a fair few players as well. We'll just have to wait and see what happens and we do have a friendly coming up here against Sampdoria. So in the last episode, we managed to sign Zivkovic. That was the main highlight of last episode. And we did buy him for £17.5 million. We, of course, brought this legend back to the club. He is a legend of the first season of this career mode. A lot of you guys wanted me to bring him back. He's now back at the club. And honestly, once again, guys, I've just got to thank you all for the support you gave on that episode. We got, once again, over 65 likes, which is absolutely awesome. But now it's time to take a little look at our inbox. We've got a few emails here regarding players. And we have a transfer offer accepted for Dybala. And it is 3 million plus nil more pay. I think the reason that I got this guy for so cheap, 3 million plus nil more pay, that's an absolute bargain. And he's certainly a better player than more pay. It's because he's got one year remaining on his contract. So obviously they want to cash on him now. I'm going to go ahead and offer him a contract, but to be honest, I'm looking at other targets in more important positions that we need to improve than the striking position at the moment. Although we still could sign Paolo Dybala, I have other business that I need to take care of first. It's really between central midfielder slash CDM really. That's the position that I'm looking to fill anyway. And we've got Kranovita here who I'm looking to buy from West Ham. Once again, I'll up the bid to 4 million plus Ozan 2 fan and see what they have to say about that. I think that's a really, really good deal for this guy. And to be honest, I think he's about 79 overall. So he would be a very, very nice signing for us. Another centre-back really is a priority. I'm looking at Karim Rekic as a possible replacement for Sutar. However, it looks like he's going to cost a lot of money. I could get him on a pre-contract deal, but remember, this is most likely the last season, guys. So we need to get this guy, if we want to get him, we need to get him in this transfer window, in other words. I'll put in an offer of 3.6 million plus Sutar, but I think I need to go for some other targets at the centre-back position that may be a little bit cheaper than Rekic. This guy played absolutely amazing when I was Colombian manager in those matches in the South America Cup. And his name is Jason Murillo. And I'm talking about coming up against players like Messi and all of the other crazy international players. This guy really did shine in the team. Two million offer it is for Murillo then. And we'll wait and see what Raul Sociedad do say about this. But I've got a feeling they may want a little bit more for their centre back because he is certainly a very, very good player. If I'm not able to go for Murillo, then I will go for this guy, Alvarez Balanta. Of course, his international teammate. I played with him a lot with Colombia. And once again, I've been very, very impressed with him. 3 million offer for Alvarez Balanta plus Sutar. That should be enough money to cover his value. And we'll wait and see what River Plate do end up saying about this. It seems like a lot of the transfer offers are unacceptable from a lot of these clubs for players because of the fact that they're not interested in Tufan. However, I do want to get rid of Tufan. He's not growing and I do have a policy in this series. If a player isn't growing, then I do like to shift them on. I want to bring in players that will end up growing. So here we're going to have a little look at the squad report for this month. And I'm just going to go through players very quickly. Watma is up to 73 overall. We've got John Sutar as well, who despite being unhappy every single time I open up this squad report, he's always unhappy and it really does annoy me. He has grown to a 78 overall. We then have Ross Wilde. He's gone up to 73 overall now. And he's certainly a very, very good player for the future. And actually could play a very vital role this season. That is if we don't sign another CDM. David Ryan, another youth player that's really looking very promising. He has gone up to 72 overall. And yes, that is the news that I wanted to see. We've got Zivkovic, who's up to 83 overall. He hasn't even made his debut yet, and he's already starting to grow. That is promising signs from him. I was very, very worried that he was going to be a glitch player. Then we have two centre-backs here who have grown. First, John Anthony Brooks. He's up to 83 overall. And then we have Milo Savic. He's up to 80 overall. I'm so glad we managed to keep him because he is a very, very good centre-back for us. And certainly a key member of the squad. That's the end of the squad report for this month. Not really too much growth in there, to be honest. I'm a little bit disappointed by that. But I'm sure as the season does commence, we will see some more players begin to grow. And in the meantime, we do have a match here against Sampdoria. And it is going to be a friendly match. So as always, we are going to sim it. But before we do that... 
we do need to set up the team that we are going to play for this match. So here we go into this match against Sampdoria. We are going to go ahead and sim it. We never like to play friendlies in any of my career mode series. Here we go. Let's get into this simmed match. We are probably going to lose because the mentality of career mode is that when you simulate away from home, you're going to lose 99.9% .9 out of 100. And of course, that really isn't true. And that is not the case. But Prosperi does get the first goal of the match there. And then they do equalize there in the 39th minute. But Cartwright is the hero in this match. We end up simming this one all the way to the end. And he gets the winning goal there to pick up our first win in our first friendly of the season here. And that really, really is a very good result. Cartwright is, of course, one of our youth players, so it is nice to see that he is doing well. And we have a transfer off here for Jordan Ibe. And it is Barcelona that have come in for him. They're looking to buy my star striker, really. And like I've said many times before, I'm not going to be selling this guy. I'm not going to sell him in the final season of this career mode. Don't be ridiculous. We're just going to reject all offers and disallow future offers. Arturo Gonzalez, on the other hand, he's 24 years old. Look at these stats, though. He looks like a perfect central midfielder and could be a really, really good backup player, especially at 79 overall. And we are going to go ahead and offer 4 million plus Ozan Tufan. I'm hoping that this will be enough to tempt them to sell their midfielder. He looks like an amazing player. I've just shown you his stats. He really is a good player. And we will submit that and see what Atlas do say about that. Oh, for God's sake, I didn't play you in one friendly match and now I've got a whole inbox of messages spamming me that I should have played them in that match or they're disappointed and I can understand Man John's disappointment. I probably should have played him. Looking at the youth squad for this month as well, I did forget to show you guys this. We've got Alex Clayton again. He has been one of the best players in the youth squad for a while now. And then we have some other players here. Jack Barton, very, very good potential. Jake Cartwright, Probably not good enough to be honest in the potential aspects. Jake Matthews, however, looks very, very good. His potential is very, very nice. And then we got Liam Collins. He's started to drop off a little bit, so I'm going to release him. And I will keep Liam Palmer. Once again, a player with very good potential. And Victor Cardenas, not good potential, not good overall. So again, we're going to release him. We have some more emails in our inbox. We have a transfer offer accepted here for Belanta, and it's a 3 million deal plus John Sutar. He's 79 overall at the age of 26, like I did say. I'll give him a five year deal, and I will give him 60,000 a week. I will give him. I won't give him a squad roll, actually. We'll see if he accepts that, because that could be a very, very good deal if he does end up accepting that. And for our final friendly here, we will go ahead and simulate this one and see what result we do get from it. We've got a really, really weak side. We've got our third choice goalkeeper in goal. And we've also got a very, very weak midfield. So it will be interesting to see what sort of a result we get from it. And Manjon gets the first goal of the game and makes it 1-0. And we end up getting a 3-0 result. Zivkovic comes on late on in the match to get his debut goal for Portsmouth. I honestly think EA are taking the mickey. I really do. Like, seriously. I played this guy in the last match. It's his fault that he's got such terrible stamina. So why is he now complaining that he can't play in the second friendly? I don't even know anymore, honestly. If you have terrible stamina, I can't play you because you're not fit enough to play. It's as simple as that. Some more emails here. We have a transfer offer accepted. This time it's from Atlas and it is for, of course, Arturo Gonzalez. It looks like we are going to be signing this guy then. The amount of central midfielders that I've been going in for, honestly, it's ridiculous. This guy could provide some very, very nice cover to Prosperi on the left central midfield position. He is a left-footed player and he looks very, very good. I showed you his stats earlier anyway. And we are going to get him for a fairly expensive price, I will be honest. But I'm sure he is going to be worth it. Let's give him a five-year deal. 20,000 a week and we'll see if he goes ahead and accepts that. Alvarez Belanta on the other hand has accepted his contract so we will go and take a little look at this one now. Of course I am Colombian manager. I know how good this guy is so I'm going to go ahead and sign this guy. I know I'm selling John Sutar. He could probably get to a very high overall but currently he is not in my plans. We are in the last season of career mode so even if he does grow into something special it won't matter anyway. Common signing it may be, but of course we are Colombian manager and I thought it would be fitting to buy this guy because honestly, during that Copa America or whatever it was, that tournament that we played with Colombia, this guy was an outstanding centre back. And you can certainly see why. He's got some very good strength, very good acceleration and sprint speed for a centre back. 
Good aggression, good interceptions, and overall very, very nice defensive stats, really. We also have a contract for accepted for Arturo Gonzalez. Now, will I have to adjust my wage budget? No. I absolutely per perfected that transfer there. Six million plus Ozan Tufan. Again, we are trading another player in a swap deal. This time it's Tufan. He wasn't growing and we are going to be bringing in Arturo Gonzalez. So we do have a match here in the Community Shield final against Chelsea. But I am going to be ending the episode off here, guys. I'm going to leave you on a cliffhanger. If you want to see the next episode in this career mode and you want to see us take on Chelsea and try and get some revenge on Chelsea because of course they did beat us in the FA Cup final and if you don't want to see that then of course feel free to leave a like on the video guys and subscribe if you haven't already as it really really does help out my channel guys thank you for all the support as of recent on the videos and to any new subscribers that have subscribed to the channel welcome to the channel I really am grateful for you subscribing and I know a lot of you new subscribers aren't really too sure what's going on in this series. And that's fair enough. And I can understand that you don't want to be going through all those 100 episodes that I have done so far. And because of that, I probably will end up doing another career mode. Maybe at the end of this season. We'll just have to wait and see what does happen at the end of this season. But for the time being... We are focusing on the final season of this career mode. But apart from that, guys, I'm going to have to leave it there. Hopefully you have enjoyed. And I'll see you next time for another video. Thanks for watching.